Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, September 25th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Nokia has unveiled two new additions to their Nokia Asha Touch family. Research in Motion's annual developer conference, BlackBerry Jam Americas, officially kicks off today. And if you can't live a day without holding your mobile phone, you might have nomophobia. Here with today's mobile roundup, we're now joined by SiliconANGLE News Desk editor, Kristen Nicole, to discuss these headlines and more. Welcome, Kristen. Good morning. So Nokia has unveiled two new additions to their Nokia Asha Touch family, the Nokia Asha 308 and Nokia Asha 309. Now, why are these uh, big developments with Nokia? Well, first off, they're complete smartphones and they have a few things that differentiate themselves from the rest of the market. They're definitely budget friendly, which is something that we don't see very often from Nokia. And they also have a, a speedy browser, so that should really help out with web access and application access. So that's the Nokia Express browser, I believe? Yes, the new it's a it's an updated version of their Nokia Express browser and it's reportedly 90% more efficient when it comes to mobile web browsing and applications of course tend to pull data from the web and the faster you can access that data the better. And now you said something about m more affordability. Uh, what's yes. the price point for these new phones? They are expected to retail around $99. Uh, that's not including whatever taxes and fees may come about. And that is a really low price for a lot of Nokia phones. Of course, we've seen the Lumias come out earlier this year and some other things that are really pushing Windows, uh, Windows Phone. And for Nokia, this is a, a very broad, very accessible device that they're trying to push that's still within their smartphone family. So is there a specific consumer that they have in mind for these types of phones? It seems like the younger generation seems to be the target demographic with this, especially when it comes to the efficiencies around the mobile browser and uh, media streaming, uh, media consum consumption, things of that nature. Now, Research in Motion's annual developer conference, BlackBerry Jam Americas, officially kicks off today, and that's going to run until the 27th in San Jose, California. Can you tell us what we can expect to come out of the BlackBerry Jam Americas conference? We're really looking to hear a little bit more about their BlackBerry uh, operating system update for mobile devices, BlackBerry 10, of course. Um, and we've heard earlier news uh, about what BlackBerry 10 is going to involve um, earlier this year, and we're hoping to get some more details around what all BlackBerry 10 will include, looking for some updates specific with their camera, perhaps, or even some additional social media integration. Um, iOS had the major update with Facebook and, and Twitter integration, and Android already had that pretty down pat, so it's, it's Rem's turn. What specifically is the big news about this BlackBerry 10 operating system? Well, really just looking for more details here, it's been a, a very overdue operating system. BlackBerry's undergone several delays in releasing this, and it's not looking like it's going to be ready for release until early next year, which means they're going to have a very quiet holiday season and probably miss out on some more retail opportunities this year as they have in recent months. So with um, some, some of those camera upgrades and the social media integration, they could hopefully get on par with some of their rivals in the market. Any news as to whether BlackBerry will address the outage that occurred last Friday, the same day as Apple's iPhone 5 launch? It would be very smart of them to do that. BlackBerry had a major outage uh, last week, and this is the second in the past year they had a massive outage not too long ago that affected a lot of the same countries that this most recent outage affected. And of course, their claim to fame is their security and their, and their browser service. Their email encryption, security, server access and service. So for all of that to go down, it's never good for, for BlackBerry and horrible timing. That, that outage had the, the ill judgment of coming the same day as the iPhone 5 release last week. So if you can't live a day without holding your mobile phone and you start to feel anxious or nervous, if you spend a few minutes without access to it, you might have something called nomophobia. So nomophobia, is this for real? It's real. Uh, it was confirmed, accepted into the medical terminology back in 2008, and we haven't heard a lot about it since then, but a recent study that came out not too long ago did some comparisons from 2008 to the present, and I think we all suffer a little bit from nomophobia. Who doesn't get nervous when they don't have their cell phones right on them? I understand they're now offering treatment for it as well. Yeah, that's the other news this week, uh, to have, be able to go in and, and be treated, go to rehab for <laughs> cell phone anxiety. Um, 
I volunteer. <laughs> So it's been discovered that the Verizon iPhone 5 can be used with an AT&T SIM card. However, there won't be any LTE capability. So the company confirmed that their iPhone 5s were unlocked and they have no plans of unlocking them. Why is this good news and who else is this good news for? This is good news for Verizon subscribers, of course. It's always great to have the flexibility of not having to stay locked in with one carrier. If you need to swap out that SIM card, go ahead and do so. It does leave Verizon open for their devices to be used on other networks, but they probably don't have much to worry about. A lot of the iPhone users, the new iPhone users, also have that two-year contract. So they're you know, already locked into Verizon service. And also, uh, if there is any way that you can have the LTE support with that. Uh, Verizon's got one of the biggest initiatives when it comes to 4G, and that's a huge perk compared to some of the other networks out there. Something else I wanted to talk about today, MySpace has put out a new video sort of introducing what they call the new MySpace. Uh, what do you think about this? Can they make a comeback? They might be able to make a comeback. Who knows how many users they'll actually attract with the, the revised website that they're working on. But I got a chance to see the video this morning, and it looks pretty good. It actually looks kind of like a Google Plus meshed with a sideways Tumblr. Um, it's got a very clean layout. It's very image heavy. So lots of obviously, they're trying to get users to share a lot of media and photos. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of event integration and things of that nature. And uh, with this promo video, Justin Timberlake like is all over the place so I think ever since he played Sean Parker in the Facebook movie he's just been really anxious to get involved in social media some way somehow. Any idea on who My MySpace might be targeting with their new site? Uh, it seems like they have a, a broad appeal to music fans in general. They're clearly going with adding and layering in more editorial around the artists that take the time to create a page on the new MySpace and turn that into a, a very networked community that can be used for promotions. And one of the more interesting things that I thought uh, it could looks like is going to be included in the new MySpace is, is a data layer with visualization so you can see where your users are, are being engaged around the world and so the the editorial that's coming around that I think could be a, a huge positive for the new MySpace. Well Kristen we appreciate you being on and we'll see you again soon. Take care. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.